You know, Ray, she impresses Han Solo. He's like the guy's guy, impresses him, impresses everybody in the audience. She goes up with Kylo Ren, she punks him right away. Like, he's supposed to be this great guy, wiped all these people, I don't know. She took that lightsaber and was like, I'm gonna take you out. And she did, and I'm all for it. And she looked strong. Shut the f*** up. Nerderotic.com. It's time for a long overdue Star Wars Schadenfreude Schmorgesborg video with some inevitable news, some ridiculous news with the felonying, and some very interesting but not surprising news from George Lucas and John Favreau. But before we get started with that, this channel is approaching a major milestone and I would like to express my gratitude. We're almost at 250,000 subscribers and that would not be possible without you. So I hope I continue to earn your subscription. If you haven't, please consider doing so. Thank you for liking and sharing the videos. And if you could do that with your favorite YouTuber as well, I'm sure they would appreciate it. And I will continue to try to do my very best. Now we get this news today. George Lucas and John Favreau hate The Last Jedi. Cameron Pasha reveals neither Lucas nor Favreau have love for the mouse's handling of Star Wars. Now, this is an earth shattering. I think we've all known this, but Cameron's a pretty credible source and this also backs up what we heard in Iger's biography and because I believe there is a synchronicity in life this news dropped through Jeremy at Geeks and Gamers who I do Friday Night Tights with and we had the felonying last Friday based on some itchy baka tweets an article a doomcock video where some video from Dave Filoni has surfaced from about four years ago where he's pandering to a women's conference and straw manning Star Wars fans, going along with everything Rianne Johnson has said, Pablo Hidalgo, and Kathleen Kennedy. And in isolation by itself, however you want to put it, Filoni's comments are nothing. But when you compound it with what we've already heard before, I'm sure some people felt wounded when they heard this from Dave Filoni. Now, I will preface this by saying I am indifferent towards the guy. I've never seen him as good or bad. I've just seen him as a Lucasfilm employee who was the showrunner of a cartoon and had something to do with The Mandalorian, which was most certainly a course correction. And we get some more details on why this course correction happened, and a lot of us ended up being right. Now, it also brought up the question of why are we here? Why am I here as a YouTuber commenting on this? And why are you here on YouTube in our chats? Well, it's because we have nowhere else to go. It's because we will approach the subjects no one else will. Identity politics sidelined the narrative of Star Wars. It's obvious, yet nobody in the access media will talk about it, and no creative former or current, would dare talk about it out of fear of angering the mouse. George Lucas and John Favreau hate The Last Jedi. Cameron Pasha reveals neither Lucas nor Favreau have love for the mouse's handling of Star Wars. Again, as far as George Lucas is concerned, this isn't earth-shattering news. We already knew some of this through Bob Iger's book. But with John Favreau, this confirms what other YouTubers have been saying for a couple of months. And honestly, I wasn't sure if I entirely believed it. I thought Lucasfilm pretty much was lockstep when it comes to identity politics. And maybe there was some fighting over the narrative, but I didn't think there was a true division. Now I do. On a live stream on Geeks and Gamers' YouTube channel, which I will link in the description, Jeremy Griggs interviewed Hollywood filmmaker and novelist Cameron Paja, who has written episodes for Sleeper Cell, Nikita, Rain, and Roswell, New Mexico. Paja stated that multiple people who know George Lucas personally have said to him that the creator of the Star Wars franchise hated The Last Jedi. I sold them to the white slavers that take these things and... And, uh, <laughs> okay, but, but again, it's obvious. You can see it in George's face now. He's a bit of a cold fish, but you can still tell it's killing him inside and it has been killing him inside. And the white slavers comment that he brought up isn't going away. He meant what he said. I do have people who know George Lucas personally and well who have said to me that he hates The Last Jedi and he's horrified by what's happened. 
Jeremy would go on to ask for any further information regarding Lucas's thoughts on Disney's handling of the Star Wars franchise as a whole, and Cameron offered this. I've heard the most about The Last Jedi because he's been vocal on it. So when I started getting people to talk to me privately, someone who I will not identify, someone I know has very deep roots inside of Lucasfilm today and the George Lucas camp, as in personal relationship with Lucas himself have said to me that Lucas has said privately that he feels The Last Jedi, and to use the actual word, was soulless. It lacks a soul, and that he was so shocked. George Lucas is calling something soulless. The man who wrote and directed the prequels is calling something soulless. And I agree with him. Pasha would continue to reiterate what George Lucas himself has said in interviews regarding The Force Awakens and it having felt recycled. He also noted the likelihood of there existing a non-disparagement clause within the billion-dollar contract that he signed when he sold off the property to Disney, which would prohibit him from saying anything publicly that could bring down the value of the IP. There's nothing George can do that Disney hasn't already done to bring down the value of this IP, but I won't argue a simple facial expression from him could probably bring down some stock. While longtime fans have long surmised that Lucas is not a fan of what Disney has done with his baby, this news gives all of that gravity. But Pasha would go on to reveal an even larger truth that John Favreau is also not a fan of how Star Wars has been handled up to this point. And I agree, this is the bigger news. I've never revealed this publicly. I have a friend who's very close with John Favreau and has worked with him on several movies. And this is what he said to me. I don't know John Favreau. He said to me that John Favreau hates The Last Jedi. He said to me recently, we had a lunch before all of the lockdowns happened. He said to me that John Favreau told him what he claims. Again, this is coming from a friend who has worked on Favreau's productions in his inner circle multiple times. And he has said to me that Favreau told him that once he saw The Last Jedi, he realized that Star Wars was out of control and that he actively lobbied to get involved in it because he's a fan and he wanted to save the franchise. And this part's my speculation. I think this is when Kevin Feige got involved as well. That it wasn't just that Lucasfilm went out to him, but he started saying, guys, I could help with this. You guys are on the wrong track. That's what he says to me. I believe it. And again, something I've stated a lot and so have others, you can't take what people say in public through access media interviews or any statements from Disney itself at face value. It's all BS. It's all acting. It's all part of the promotion. So if you hear something contradictory and somebody tries to throw it back in your face, well, Cameron and Jeremy both talk about this. Cameron can confirm what I'm about to say. Uh, this is my assumption. In Hollywood, you know what? If you want to play the game, you got to play the game. So uh, don't be surprised if in this current environment, someone asks John Favreau to make a political comment, blah, blah, blah. And he says exactly what the SJWs want to hear because he's got to protect himself. So I don't want to hear this crap. Favreau said this. He's an SJW. He's, what else is he going to say, man, in this environment? <laughs> What's yeah. he going to say? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So how does this relate to the felonying? And what is the felonying? If you don't spend any time on Twitter or you haven't watched any of my live streams, you might not know. Well, it relates to what Dave Filoni said at the beginning of this video in that great Perry Chan little clip there that's on Twitter. Please give him a follow. Again, the link will be in the description. Dave Filoni straw manned the Star Wars fans to try to pander to some women's group a few years ago, and it does matter. She's a female lead in a whole new chapter of the Star Wars saga. We haven't done a movie for 10 years, and here comes a Star Wars film, and here comes Rey, and it's, what is it? Is it Panic in the Streets? Oh my gosh, a female lead in a Star Wars movie. And then the trailer for Rogue One comes out, and it's another female lead. Oh my gosh, how unfair. We've had probably like two million straight film cinematic roles where men have been leads, and now we've done two in a row that are women. Uh, well, too bad. Oh well. <laughs> Maybe there are more coming. I don't know. This is this idea that like, and I run into this sometimes uh, when working with writers, it's like, well, we just made one of those. Made one of what? We just made a female lead. Uh-huh. We can make another one. Really? Yes, we can. There's more than one woman in the world. There's more than one woman here in the world. 
I'm sure there was a few anonymous Twitter accounts with anime avatars who were upset about a female lead in The Force Awakens, but I don't remember much of it. I remember a lot of people being excited that George Lucas handpicked Kathleen Kennedy, Lawrence Kasdan was going to be involved, Han, Luke, and Leia were going to be together again on screen, but that turned out to be clickbait, and that oh-so-important female lead didn't have a story at all throughout three movies. So this hasn't aged very well, and again, this was from four years ago, but it exposes the culture within Lucasfilm, who are ready and willing to tear something down to build something new, but were unwilling to do the work to build on to what was already successful in the first place. And now we're at where we're at. Just like with Doctor Who and Star Trek, past Star Wars is problematic. And the only logical conclusion for Disney after they've completely deconstructed George Lucas's Star Wars is to remake the original trilogy. Disney should remake the Star Wars original trilogy movies from the willing participant access media comicbook.com, which is owned by CBS. After Star Wars, The Fall of Skywalker, the Palpatine saga has come to a close, but that does not mean it has achieved closure, really. The Star Wars sequel trilogy and standalones have created many new continuity knots. Nope, you've completely deconstructed it, and Star Wars has generally gotten so much bigger than what George Lucas originally envisioned for the franchise, has it now? Instead of constantly bending modern Star Wars to fit the limited view of the original trilogy, the limited view of the original trilogy, you see what we're up against here, folks? The Phantom Menace isn't just about a bad Star Wars movie. It isn't just about the treatment of fans. It's also about fighting the access media. I thought I was taking crazy pills until I found you guys here and realized that there is still some sanity left in the world. We should now consider another option. Disney should remake the Star Wars original trilogy for the good of the franchise and its fans. I'm not going to read this whole article because it's ridiculous, but it's also inevitable. Disney doesn't have too many places to go with Star Wars other than mucking around in prequel world, maybe a Darth Vader movie, but after that, anything is just starting this franchise from scratch. So of course they'll remake the original trilogy and they will use this logic. A new version of Star Wars the original trilogy would have full knowledge of the Skywalker saga canon in front of it. It could lend much more weight to details, new scenes, characters, and storylines to grow into bigger things things down the line because that works so well with Jar Jar Abrams' Star Trek. The role of villains like Vader and Palpatine would be much more fleshed out. Oh my god. And the writing on the original trilogy heroes like Luke, Han, and Leia could be updated to better fit the older, modern, complex versions we met in the sequel trilogy. Did you hear that? So they were older, they were modern, they were complex, but we need to add to them somehow. Access Media Logic. Do it. If you've been around this channel for any amount of time, you know that I am completely checked out on Star Wars. So go ahead, do it. Go ahead and update Han, Luke, and Leia and turn it into Lucy, Hana, and Princess Lee. I don't really give a shit anymore because Disney Star Wars has crushed this franchise and there's nothing they can do. And remaking the original trilogy would be a total disaster that I will enjoy chronicling. And what will continue being the most entertaining thing about Disney Star Wars is what goes on behind the scenes. Yes, I believe Cameron Pasha. I think George Lucas and John Favreau hated The Last Jedi. Yes, I believe that Dave Filoni is just another guy at Lucasfilm. And yes, I believe they will remake the original trilogy. We will go out with some wise words from George Lucas that he should have stuck with. Until then, have a great day. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. I will go my way and I'll let them go their way. And it really does come down to a, a simple rule of life, which is when you break up with somebody, the first rule is no phone calls. The second rule, you don't go over to their house and drive by to see what they're doing. <laughs> the third one is you don't show up at their coffee shop or the things where you're gonna run it. You just say, no, gone, history, I'm moving forward. Because every time you do, and you know, we all learn this from experience, every time you do something like that, you're opening the wound again. And it just makes it harder for you. You have to put it behind you, and it's a very, very, very hard thing to do.
nerderotic.com. Please subscribe.